Hi guys, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So in today's video, we're not going to be looking at how to play a particular tank or looking at a particular map or any of that jazz. We're not being looking at how to play the game per se. What we are going to concentrate on, however, is something that a lot of newer players take for granted or alternatively don't fully realize. And that is the in-game resources that you can use to improve your tank. Now, I'm talking about crew skills, camo, consumables, etc, etc. And a lot of new players probably don't understand this because they've never been told. Now, there are some videos out there from back in the day because not many people have addressed this more recently. So I thought it was about time that we sort of looked at that kind of stuff. Now, when you buy a tank or when you unlock a tank in the tech tree, when you get it, it jumps you into the garage and you are given a pop up. You know, I have crew at 50%, 75%, or 100% crew skills. But what does that actually mean? Now, all the tanks come with the default setting of 50% crew, which means your crew are only going to be 50% efficient, which means you're not going to have a good gunner, you're not going to have the best of loaders, you're not going to have the best of commanders. So you're not going to be spotting everything immediately. You're not going to be, you know, your gunner's not going to be, you know, perfectly aligning himself onto that target to make the shot. You are then given the option for a little bit of gold to go to 75%, which means obviously they're going to be slightly better. And then you're allowed even more gold to go to 100%, which means they're already fully trained. Now, here's the thing. It's very tempting to throw a lot of gold at this and just get your 100% crew straight off the bat. But that wastes gold and it's actually disingenuous, funnily enough. My advice is get the 75% crew. Okay, it's gonna cost you a little bit, but after about 10 games, you're gonna have 100% anyway. So you've saved yourself some gold and you've managed to roll out in the tank and get a little bit better at it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, it gets you used to the tank. If you go straight out there with a 100% crew, all you're doing is throwing gold away, if I'm being perfectly honest. So that's that part. There is another element to crew skills, however, which a lot of new players are totally unaware of. So if I go down to our, our bar here, you can see it starts with crew, <clears throat> ends in equipment. So let's click on crew. Now this is not the 100%, 75% and 50% crew. This is completely different. Now these are all your crew skills across all your tanks, not just the object 140. And just to prove that, I'm gonna jump into the object 907, click on the same crew, and there you go. It's the same, same. So it doesn't matter if we've got a 100% crew or a 50% crew. These crew skills apply to all your tanks. <clears throat> now, what I wanna therefore look, you know, I'll just show on the T62A as well. Um, oh, that's the wrong one. And as you can see, it's the same. Now, what are these? Well, you can see they're different things. You've got, at the top, this one here, you've got the, the, the skill levels for light tanks. You've then got the skill levels for medium tanks, the skill levels for heavy tanks, and the skill levels for TDs. But what are these, I hear you ask? So as you can see, there are five skill levels per class of tank. Okay, so let's have a look at the mediums, okay? We've got Rage, which accelerates your gun loading. We've got Penetration Boost, which gives you a better chance of hitting the tank. You've got Mentor, which increases your crew XP. That's the XP you need to get yourself from 50 to 100%. Then we've got Smooth Ride, which gives the gun dispersion, it decreases the gun dispersion, which is something that you need in a lot of tanks. And then we have Smooth Traverse, which also decreases the gun dispersion during your turret traverse. That's only for medium tanks, okay? Now, we've then got the same thing for light tanks. We've got Hasty Shot, Breakthrough, Soft Recoil, Precision Fire. Now, that is a huge one. Fire three shots in a row and deal damage with each shot and get a 35% chance of dealing maximum, maximum damage with the next shot. That's a huge thing. And we've got Fast Capture. Moving down, we've got Robustness, Close Combat Master, Firefighting, Adrenaline Rush, and Repairs. And finally, for the TDs, Sniper, 
deadly accuracy, camouflage, clutch braking, and smooth turn. Now the thing is, whilst they are broken into each category there, that only means that when you drive those categories, okay, so if I drive a light tank, then I, you know, I've got ASD shot, for example, the one that I'm sort of trying to grind, every time I drive a light tank, I get things thrown into hasty shot and I get to improve the skill. Once I've unlocked the skill, however, it applies on all my tanks, okay? Doesn't just apply on the light tank. You grind it on a light tank, but it applies to every tank in your garage. Now, as you can see, I have maxed out all the crew skills. And if you're, you know, you probably haven't known this, but what I'm gonna do quickly, over this side, you can see how much they cost. And you're probably wondering, well, what's this green star thing? Wow, that is what they call Elite XP. Now you've got two types of XP, Free XP, which is the gold star, and Elite XP, which is the green star. Now, as you can see here next to my skills, it tells me how much Elite XP I have got. So for example, in my light tanks, I've got 4.18 million free XP, elite XP. In my mediums, I've got 16 and a half million elite XP. My heavy is 22 million elite. And in my TDs, I've got 10.2 million. So I've got a lot of elite XP that I could actually use to upgrade all my crew skills. And a lot of players don't realize that because they realize you've got to throw they, they think you've got to throw gold or something at it, when actually you don't. So you need to go in and see how much XP you've actually got, this elite XP, because then you can use it to unlock these skills and max out, if you need to, all your crew skills. And if you max them out, you have got an advantage on the battlefield, okay? Not gonna lie, you've got a big advantage. So for example, when I roll out, if I hit three in a row, okay, my fourth shot, which has cost me 1.1 million elite XP to get, on top of all the other costs, obviously, to fast forward it, then I'm gonna dish out over and above the I and alpha of that tank, okay? And I've got a 35% chance of knocking out that massive damage. That's a big deal, guys. So you need to think about this. Now, if you're, just grinding away here there are some things that are really good and some things that will come later now i would advise everybody to try and get precision fire sooner rather than later because that helps significantly it really does the other thing that helps okay is penetration boost so when the skill is activated penetration goes from 100 percent to 105 percent that makes a big difference. I mean, that's quite a good one. But also, rage is a good one. Because um, it, it, it helps you reload quicker, okay? So these are for mediums. When you start rolling down, okay, then you've got adrenaline rush, okay? Adrenaline rush is quite a good one to get. So is firefighting, and so is repairs, because you want your repairs quicker, okay? You want to unlock those repairs quicker. And then for TDs, I generally grind this one, Sniper, because it gives you a 7% chance of making a shot that is guaranteed to dish damage, along with deadly accuracy. Again, it increases your view range and aiming speed. So these are things that you should be looking at, okay, guys? So use your free XP. Now, as I said, it tells you how much elite XP you've got next to your thing. If you jump over here, however, it tells me that in total, it tells me all the tanks I've got all my XP on. Now, it tells me I've got 39.9 million elite XP that I can use to convert to free XP. Now, that's if I want to. But I use my elite XP, well, I don't anymore, but I used my elite XP to just unlock all of these. And you can see they've all, they've all got prices next to them. So if you've got some, if, if you don't know what Elite XP is, jump into this crew one, have a look, and then you will see exactly what is going on out there. And if you've got enough 
XP, elite XP, to unlock these crew skills because they do give you an advantage. Next, camo. Now, forget the attachment, the attachment does nothing. We are looking at camo. Now, a lot of players do not see the benefit of camo, and I can understand that. When you're rolling out from tiers one to five, nine times out of 10, I think nowadays, there is no camo available to you. Okay, Wargaming has sort of taken it away because they, they think that you don't need it. Um, therefore, when you grind through and you do pretty well against the bots and then you do pretty well against the other newer players, you generally think, well, why do I need to spend money on camo? Because I've done okay without it. It's not a big deal. Actually, as you grow up through the tiers, camo becomes massively important. And I see a lot of players rolling out, particularly new players, rolling out in the top tiers, you know, tiers nine and tiers 10, with completely bare naked tanks. Now, they'd think that, well, camo doesn't really add anything. Actually, it does, it adds a lot. It adds more than you think. Now, every tank in the game already has a camo rating, okay? Be it stationary, moving, or firing. Every tank in the game has a camo rating. Some tanks have a very poor camo rating. Think Death Star 183. Some tanks have a great camo rating. Think Vickers Light or, or whatever. And most tanks have a medium camo rating. Think the T62A here. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that if you're stationary, for example, it's harder for players on the other team to spot you. Okay. When you move, it becomes slightly easier for them to spot you. And when you fire, it becomes very easy for them to spot you. Now, all the camos in the game give you a, an increase in your camo profile. So, for example, if we take the T62A, which has a, 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 a camo rating of about, I can't remember now, it's about, let's say, 40%. Okay. That means that when you're stationary, you know, you are invisible 40% and visible 60% as long as you're in the spotting range. And I'm not talking about proximity spotting here. Now, proximity spotting is when the two tanks are sort of next to each other and there's a building in the way. I'm talking about actual spotting over distance. So that's how that works. Now, the camo for a T62A, for example, gives you an additional 3%. Now, it doesn't sound much, but believe me, it actually translates to quite a lot. It increases your camo profile massively, okay? Now, if I take it off, your, your camo profile then drops, okay? So you have your standard profile and then nothing. So you're not helping yourselves by not using camo. Now look, nobody's telling you to go out and buy legendary camo at 4,000 a pop. Some of you will get certificates, okay? And you can use them, you can use the certificates. Some of you may have credits, and you can use credits on, on some of the camos. If I roll all the way down, because I've got a lot of camos here, you know, you can use credits on your standard camo. And look, it costs us, it gives me the same profile, 3%. And now 3% really does help a lot. You may not think it, but it does. So in, you may think it's a waste of money or a waste of resource or whatever. Actually, it's not. And I strongly advise all you newer players out there to, you know, stop being a little bit tight. No one's telling you to spend gold, but stop being a little bit tight. Get out there, put some camo, even if it's just the basic camo on your tanks. Okay, it, they're not there just to make your tank look pretty and stand out on the battlefield. It's actually there for a reason. It really does increase your chances of not being spotted. So remember that. Don't just roll out thinking, bah, it's cost money and I don't want tanks to look pretty. It, it's just useless. It doesn't work that way. Next, we look at consumables. Now, consumables is a big thing, okay? And a lot of people take the wrong consumables or they just don't understand how the consumables work. And again, they see the prices and think, eh. Now, this is my T62A and I use you know, these consumables. But I, I, I generally rotate between repair kit and engine power boost. It depends what mood I'm in and what sort of mood I, I, I wanna, uh, you know, what, what sort of gameplay I'm playing that day. 
for most tanks, okay, you're going to be, you should be dropping adrenaline. Now, adrenaline gives you a 20% increase to your reload speed. In other words, your your reload speed goes down significantly. Okay, you also get a 10% chance of damaging enemy tank modules like tracks and stuff like that. So this really is helpful when you're in a sticky situation you know when you need to out trade somebody out dpm somebody you need to drop this so think about that now okay it costs 7560 credits but it's 7560 credits and that 7560 credits is really going to help you long term next i always use the multi-purpose restoration pack why because this combines the repair kit, the first aid kit, and the fire extinguisher all in one. Okay, so you get a fire extinguisher, you get all your repairs, damaged modules, and it heals all your crew. And it costs 4,500. Now I get that most people may not be able to afford 4,500 credits, especially if they've got a lot of tanks. But if you can afford it, don't bother getting the first aid kit and fire extinguisher. Get this. It's not automatic like the fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher is automatic. So when you set a tank on fire and you've got the fire extinguisher loaded, you automatically get the fire put out. With the multi-purpose, it's not automatic. But if you press it once you've got an engine fire, it will put it out. And then as I say, I sometimes switch and swap between these two, especially on this tank, because this tank does get tracked a lot. So I have a repair kit on top of my multi-purpose kit, but sometimes I'll roll out with the engine power boost because it just gives me that little bit extra to sort of circle around the enemies or whatever so <clears throat> you have to experiment with these now the thing is with some tanks especially auto loaders if we jump into an auto loader you will not get the uh, the option of having adrenaline so if i jump into an auto loader it's gone adrenaline is gone you because you can't reload quicker okay it just doesn't happen However, if I jump into a different autoloader, which I'll show you now, then adrenaline kind of comes back a little bit, but not much. Okay, and what you then get, you get what's called a shower reload boost. Now, I don't run this on my FV4005. I, I don't necessarily see the purpose of it. It, 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 it doesn't really add anything significant to that tank. But it is there, but only on that. Now, I believe some of the some of the other auto loaders are going to get it in update 9.1, but I don't know as of yet. We also have on certain tanks, like TDs, this, the reticle calibration. Now, what does that do? Well, you know you've got your reticle. When you press this, it automatically just goes zoomp, and it pinpoint laser pinpoint accuracy. There you go. So if, you, if you've got the likes of the Waffle Track to the Grill, the FV, then this will give you pinpoint accuracy, okay? And it really does give you pinpoint accuracy. The other consumable that a lot of people don't realize is this one here, Improved Engine Power Boost. Now, this is like this, but better. This is 20%. This one is 40%. And as you can see, it's significant. Now, Wargaming have recently nerfed this one because it was crazy. I mean, you had this on the tanks like the E5 and the 215B, and it turned them into a med. So you need to be aware of that. There are other consumables that you can use, but for mediums, I generally use that. For TDs, I'm generally using this type of thing. You know, but you have to play around with it, okay? It's that straightforward. Whilst I'm still with the FV4005, I wanna show you this. Now, these are provisions. Now, I always use this one. It, it, it's called pudding and tea for the British, um, but basically it's food rations. And as you can see, it increases your, your crew skills effectively, okay, across the battlefield. Speed, reload, DPM, view range, etc., etc. Again, it's a little bit pricey, 7,560, but it does increase your crew mastery by 10%. It makes your crew work that little bit harder. And it's, it's, it's active throughout the entire battle. The other thing I want to talk about is this, spore liner. Now look, if you're rolling out in the tanks like a grill, 
NFV4005 and a waffle tractor and you've not got this loaded, then you're a crazy, crazy person. Those tanks are susceptible to HE, okay? If you smack a waffle tractor with HE, you will see its hit points just go romp. Same with the grill, and the same with the FE4005's turret, okay? If you hit the 4005's turret with HE, then you'll see its hit points just vanish. This stops that. This is called a spore liner, and it reduces the damage from HE shells by 20%. So, if you've got this loaded and it's active throughout the entire battle and you should have this loaded on the likes of the grill or the waffle tractor in the FV4005 you are not as susceptible to HG ammunition as you once were so it's costly 5,000 but I'll tell you what it's wow wow worth it and guys you really should be loading this on every one of those tanks that is very prone to HE where it is an option the other thing I use on this one is again protective kit because it just again protects my modules and protects my crew. But that's that tank. Let's go back and have a look at, let's say, the 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 the, um, the AMX, okay? Because the AMX provisions, as you can see, it's now coffee and croissant. But I use that. I also use the protective kit, and I now use improved fuel because it increases my speed. Now I want to show you a completely different tank, okay, because not all the tanks are the same, and this is the E5, okay. Now the E5 consumables also has this, reactive armor. Now reactive armor reduces damage, 20% damage from any showers except HE, that's not bad, but you've got to press that one, boom, 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 you've got to press it, and it doesn't work against HE, it only works against AP and, um, and heat. Over to provisions, We've got a new one, I mean, in the American tank, it's a case of coke. But we also have this, enhanced sandbag armor. Now this increases the tank's hit points by 6%. So I get an extra 138 hit points and it has a permanent effect throughout the entire battle. Now, you may be thinking, well, why do I need this? Those extra hit points really do go a long, long way. So you need to play around with these things, guys. You need to look at your, your provisions and which ones are gonna be suitable for which tank. Moving over to ammo, well, you know, that's up to you. I generally roll out with around, except if, if, unless I'm playing like a, a Death Star or a big TD, like a grill, etc., etc. I generally roll around with not much HE. Um, majority of my shells are going to be standard but I do have the Pramo there just in case again this is your choice this is what you are comfortable with so here you can see on my E5 I've got 22 standard 15 Pramo and 5 HE now contrast that to say my grill for example <clears throat> whereby in my grill I have 15 standard five pramo and 10 he because that's just my personal preference okay i because i know that with a grill if i get to see tanks like a leo one or a bat chat or an fv4005 i can give it some real big harm with the he and again the grill really doesn't suffer with penetration so this is why i i i don't have as much heat as normal but again, this is personal preference and it's up to you. We then go on to equipment. Now, equipment is broken into three spots, as you can see here, combat power, vitality, and specialization. Okay, so that's the ones going vertical. Horizontally, we've got stage one, stage two, stage three. Now, nine times out of 10, most players will be running calibrated shells because it gives you that additional oomph gives you that additional comfort that your shell is going to go through however not all tanks need calibrated shells some of them you may get they may have enough penetration already and therefore you can load up a gun rammer now a gun rammer reduces the reload time gives you a quicker reload and therefore increases your dpm so it's up to you which one you want to roll out in 
you know, and you need to try it and see which one you're comfortable with. Now, if you are very accurate, okay, nine times out of 10, you are hitting shots that you don't need calibrated shells and therefore you get away with better DPM, but you've got to be comfortable with that. This is here just for the grill, by the way. Next, we then have Vitality. Now, you've got two here, Proved Modules, which increases you know, the durability of your modules and reduces your ramming. Now, I don't bother with that on the grill because I'm not generally frontlining, so I use Defense System, which actually reduces the chances of things like ammo racks, crew injury and stuff. I don't need improved optics on my grill because I don't need that additional view range. So I run a camo net. That gives me, on top of my camo that I've loaded, more concealment. So my grill is 53% concealed when stationary, 40% concealed when moving, and only 7% when firing. That's big, especially when I've got the camo on top. So you remember that, guys. But you don't, you, you don't stick camo nets on things like light tanks or medium tanks, and you certainly don't stick it on a heavy tank. It's, it's useless. So you, again, you have to wonder which tanks you want this on. Some people do play it with a light tank, to be honest with you, but you shouldn't be sticking it on a heavy. You don't need it on a heavy tank. Moving down to stage two, this is just for the grill. I have enhanced gun laying drive. Why? Because it reduces my aiming time significantly. I could, and I sometimes do, go out with a supercharger, which increases that shell velocity, gets that shell down the range a lot quicker, onto the target a lot faster. But again, it's up to you, to be honest with you. I mean, I want to get out damage quickly in a grill. So that's why I use the enhanced laying device. We then go on back to vitality. And do I, do I bother with the enhanced armor? No, what's the point? I'm in a grill. You know, I don't need the advanced armor. So what I do, I increase my hit points. Because, look, I'm in a grill. I'm susceptible to, I'm penable by almost everything. What's the point of increasing my armor by 4%? Everybody's still going to be able to pen me, especially with HE. So it's better to have my additional hit points, making it a little bit harder for them to knock me down. I then have engine accelerator because I'm in a grill and I want to get out of dodge really quickly. But I could use improved control. It allows me to turn around a lot quicker. But I, I just use the engine accelerator. We then have on the grill, because it's a TD, a refined gun. This reduces the dispersion. Remember I told you what dispersion is? Dispersion is you have the aiming reticle, and it's which way the shell goes within that reticle. Well, this reduces that dispersion. It means that the shells go a lot straighter, a lot longer. So I use this on all my TDs. I don't bother with the vertical stabilizer. What is the point? I shouldn't be, I, I, you know, I'm in, I'm in a TD. I don't need to hit anything on the move. Unless, of course, I'm in an object 263, which should be on the move and not camping at the back. So for the grill, I'm using a refined gun. We've then got enhanced tracks. I don't bother with that. We also have a toolbox, which I do have. I haven't unlocked it at the moment, but I do use that on the majority of my tanks. And um, the specialization, we have the consumable delivery system, allows you to use the consumables more often, or the eye hand consumables, which gives a longer duration. I always use the eye hand consumables. I'm going to unlock these, but actually, because I keep failing to, and that's generally what I do. And that's what I have for my loadout on a grill. Now, as I said, each tank is different, guys. So whilst that is the grill, it's not what I have on a mouse, for example. So if you look at here on the mouse, I have the vertical stabilizer, I have, you know, pretty much the same way I have calibrated shells, don't bother with a camo net and, and stuff like that. So you've got to chop and change and move around them and see what you can do with them, guys, because that really does help your game overall. So that was just a quick overview. I hope, uh, I hope that's gonna be useful to people. By all means, comment and everything below. And let me know what you think. Because these are the things that are available to you in the game. They don't require you to have a specific win rate. They don't require you to have, you know, shed loads of gold or whatever. These are things that are available in the game and that you should be using. And unfortunately, a lot of new players don't realize it. So let me know your thoughts and your views on that. I've been Fujit. That has been a quick overview, overlook of what new players should be looking at and should be familiar with. By all means, comment and everything below because that's the idea. And until next time, stay safe out there.
have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about guys having fun and being happy